The fact that we can't know what happens after death is what makes it scary for a lot of people. Why do you think you can't know? I mean, death is the final barrier that you can't come back from when you pass through it. Have you ever put together an appliance without reading the instruction book and made a mess of it? Oh yeah, definitely. The, the instruction book is essential for anything. The maker knows best and gives the instructions how to make the appliance work. The Bible is God's instruction book. That makes sense. The Old Testament, God promised to destroy death. The New Testament tells us how he did it. Did you know that? I did not. Have you ever studied the Bible? No. Let me tell you what the Bible says. The reason you die is because God has given you the death sentence. It says the wages of sin is death. In other words, sin is so serious to God, he's paying you in death for your sins. It's what we've earned. Do you think you're sinful enough for God to be justified to put you to death? I would hope not. And this is the mistake most people make. They think God is just like us, that he's got our moral standard. But the Bible says he's morally perfect. So you think you're a good person? I would hope so. I, I do my best to be a good person. So how many lies have you told in your life? I don't think that's a number most people would be able to quantify. Have you ever stolen something, even if it's small, in your whole life, irrespective of its value? Not on purpose. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Yeah. Love your mum? Mm-hmm. Would you use her name as a cuss word? No. You'd never do that, because that would dishonor her. It would disrespect her, but... You haven't honored the God that gave you a mother or gave you life. You've used his name in the, pl in the place of the S word, which is called blasphemy. It's very serious in God's eyes. So serious, it's punishable by death. So I'm giving you the standard that God's going to judge with on Judgment Day. Jesus said, if you look with lust, you know what lust is? Mm -hmm. If you look with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. Have you ever looked with lust? I don't believe I have. Have you ever hated somebody? I'd have to say yes. Well, the Bible says, he who hates his brother is a murderer. That's how high God's standards are. Let me give you a quick summation. Red, this isn't judging you. This is for you to judge yourself. You've told me you're a liar, a blasphemer, and a murderer at heart. That's how God sees you. So if he judges you by the Ten Commandments, we've looked at five of them, on Judgment Day, you're going to be innocent or guilty. Oh, God would consider me guilty for that. Heaven or hell? Sounds like hell to me. Does that concern you? I know I should say yes, but if they're the God's standards, then so be it. It may not concern you, but Red, it horrifies me. I've just met you, but I care about you. I even love you. I hardly even know you, but I want, you, I want to see you in heaven. The thought of you ending up in hell takes my breath away. It's so terrible. Death is evidence that God is serious about sin. Mm -hmm. Do you know what God did for guilty sinners so he wouldn't have to go to hell? I don't believe I know. You probably do, but you don't understand it. Have you heard of Jesus dying on the cross? I have. Okay. It's as simple as this. You and I broke God's law, the Ten Commandments. Jesus paid the fine. Just before he dismissed his spirit, he said, it is finished. That's a strange thing to say when you're dying, but he was saying the debt has been paid. We broke God's law. Jesus paid the fine. Red, if you're in court and you've got speeding fines, the judge will let you go if someone else pays them. He'll say, Red, there's a lot of speeding fines here, but someone's paid him. You're out of here. You can leave. Even though you're guilty, you walk because someone paid your fine. And even though you and I are guilty before God of serious crimes, he can let us walk. He can forgive us legally because Jesus paid the fine. He evened the scales through his death and resurrection. And all you have to do to find everlasting life is repent of your sins. That means to be sorry for your sins and to turn from them. Don't play the hypocrite. Be genuine in your faith and then trust in Jesus like you trust a parachute. You're like someone on the edge of a plane 10,000 feet up. They know they have to jump. They don't have a parachute. It's really scary, but this is their plan. They're gonna flap their arms and try and save themselves. Well, you and I'd say to that person, don't do that. It's not gonna work. Just trust the parachute. So don't try and save yourself on judgment day by thinking you're a good person, because you're not. You're like the rest of us. You're a sinner. Simply transfer your trust from yourself to the Savior. And the minute you do that, you've got God's promise. He'll forgive every sin you've ever committed, all those secret sins that nobody knew about, that God saw. He'll wash them away in an instant, not because you're good, but because God is good and kind and rich in mercy. Is this making sense? It is. So, Red, if you were to die today and God gave you justice, you'd be justly damned. There are two things you must do to be saved. You must repent and trust alone in Jesus. When are you going to do that? I can't say I have a definite answer but I'm sure it is something I would want to do someday. 
Well, think of it like this. You're on a plane 10,000 feet up. If you jump, you're going to hit the ground at 120 miles an hour. You have to jump. I say, are you going to put the parachute on? You say, oh, it's something I'm going to consider one day. The best thing I can do for you would be to hang you out the plane by your ankles for five seconds, pull you in, and you'll say, oh, give me that parachute. This is terrifying. And what I've tried to do is hang you out eternity by your ankles just for a few minutes so you get fear in your heart because that fear is your friend, not your enemy. If it makes you put on a parachute, it's doing you a favor. And if it makes you come to Christ and say, God, forgive me, I'm a sinner, it's doing you a great favor. The Bible says, through the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. And we'll never let go of our sins as long as we think we're good people or we procrastinate, that is, we put things off. So I want you to think about it with this sense of sobriety. What if you died today? What if you died tonight? 150,000 people die every 24 hours. So when do you think you'll get right with God? Don't feel pressured by me, but be pressured by common sense. Okay, when do you think you're going to get right with the Lord? I know the correct answer is right now. But faith is a big thing to a lot of people. And I would need to come to that answer on my own eventually. Well, let me just tell you something about faith. I'll, I'll teach you a little lesson about faith that may really help you, okay? Mm -hmm. Do you live in this area? I do. What are you studying at the school? I'm currently majoring in English. Okay. I don't believe any of that. I don't believe you're from this area or that you're majoring in English. If I, do, if I don't have faith in your integrity, that you're speaking the truth, it's an insult to you as a human being. And so don't insult God with a lack of faith and just say, I trust the Lord. He gave me life. He gave me my, my brain. He gave me my eyes. He gave me my ability to breathe, the blueness of the sky, the love of a family. All these things are a gift from God. And so have faith in him, trust him with all your heart. You know, we trust pilots, we trust taxi drivers, we trust doctors, we trust surgeons, and all those people can let us down, but God will never let you down because he has no sin. It's impossible for God to lie, the Bible says. And that's wonderful news for you and I. We can believe everything he says in this word. So you're gonna think about what we talked about? I will. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Red, I noticed a number of times you teared up, you had tears in your eyes. Why is that? I was raised in a Christian family, so, you know, a lot of what you said is very familiar. But something's happening in your heart, isn't it? It seems so. So, all I can say is the Bible says genuine sorrow for sin is pleasing to God. The Bible says the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Do you know what contrition is? No. It means to be sorry for your sins. That's what a judge looks for in a criminal. If the criminal's sorry and he sees a tear in his eye, the judge will give him mercy. So get before the Lord and say, God, forgive me, I'm a sinner. And he won't despise that. He'll, he'll greet you with open arms and forgive you and give you a new heart with new desires. Can I pray for you? Of course. Father, I pray for Red that this day she'll come before you with a good and honest heart and understand not only your justice and your anger against sin, but your love and mercy that you extended in the cross. So this day, please speak to her heart, transform her. May she be born again, and may she love and serve you, the God who gave her life for the rest of her days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Isn't that cool? It is cool. Your family are Christians, is that right? Yeah. And they've been praying for you, and that's why you've listened today. They love you, and so do we, and so does God.